question three. Question three, usually the equations of circles. They give us the equation of the circle and they ask us to determine the center of the circle and find the radius. So first thing I'm gonna do is rearrange the circle by writing it as x squared minus 12x plus y squared minus 22y plus 152 and that's equal to zero. So now we can go ahead now and to factorize this. So factorize this by saying x minus we have 12x and when we have it we get six so it's x minus six all square plus six square and plus six square which is plus 36 plus y square minus 22 we stay so now boom and we work this out we're gonna get y we divide this by two to get y minus 11 square and then we subtract 11 or we should be subtracting six square so this should be minus 36 this should be subtracting 11 square which is subtracting 121 plus 152 and that's equal to zero if we can go ahead and put in this put this in its standard form what we're going to get is x minus six all square plus y minus 11 all square and then we notice we have minus 36 minus 121 plus 152 we can bring all of those to the other side minus 36 minus 121 plus 152 we we'll bring it to the other side and so it's equal to 5. so now we can tell them that the center of the circle center of circle is center of the circle is 6 11. We know that we have the center of the circle we can tell them that the radius is and the radius is going to be the square root of 5. That's the radius, the square root of 5. Nice and easy. The next part says determine the equation of the normal to the circle at 410. I always like to picture what we're doing. So let me draw a circle. It's always nice to get a schematic of what we have. So this is a circle and the center is 6 11 so this is the center 6 11 and then this is the center 6 11 and they want us to find the equation of the normal at 4 10. the next is 4 and y is 10 so this is somewhere here 4 10 is somewhere right here All right this is 4 10 and so this will be the tangent to the circle at that point. But they don't want the tangent to the circle at that point. They want the normal. So the normal will be the line passing through this point and the point of tangency. This is the normal. All right, this is the normal. This red line is the normal. So this is what we want. So now let's find the normal. Oh, so this we can write down, this is part i, this is part i, i, and now they want the normal. So first thing, we'll start with the gradient of the normal. The gradient of the normal is going to be equal to, this point as I know it is 410, and so it's going to be y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, so it's y2 of 11 minus 10, 11 minus 10 over 6 minus 4. All right, 11 minus 10 over 6 minus 4. 11 minus 10 is 1. 
6 minus 4 is 2. That's the gradient of the normal. Gradient of the normal is 1 over 2. Now, the next thing that we want is, next thing that we want is, we'll find the gradient of the normal, we need to find the equation now. So it's y minus the y value, which is 10. And that's of course equal to the gradient times x minus the x value at that point, which is four. And so this is the equation of the normal, all right? I'm not gonna simplify because I didn't ask to. So this is the equation of the normal. They didn't ask to simplify, so I'll leave that there. Y minus 10 equal a half X minus four. So now part B of the question. Part B gives us a vector OA they tell us that vector OA is equal to three negative two. That's vector OA, three negative two. And they give us vector OB. And they tell us vector OB is five negative seven. So I'm rewriting it from the I, J form into the vector form. That's what we're used to. Then they ask us for vector AB. Vector AB is vector of the last minus vector of the first. So vector AB as we know it is vector OB minus vector OA. So all we need to do is work this so out. Vector AB is vector OB minus vector OA. So it's going to be five minus three, five minus three, which is two over negative seven minus minus two. So negative seven minus negative seven minus minus two. So that's minus five. So that's vector A, B, two, negative five. All right, so that's vector AB, but they want the unit vector AB. So in order to find the unit vector AB first, we need to find the magnitude of vector AB. So the magnitude of vector AB is gonna be equal to the square root of two square plus five square. So the magnitude is the square root of two square plus five square. Now two square plus five square, mm -hmm. that looks like 29. 25 plus four, that's the square root of 29. All right? So what does that mean? That means that the unit vector AB, this is how we write unit vector. So AB, and you put a little hat on top of it, that means unit vector, it's equal to the square root Unit vector is equal to, let's write it good now. It's one over the magnitude of vector AB, which is one over the square root of 29 multiplied by the vector AB itself. multiplied by vector AB and vector AB is two negative five. Now, because they gave us in the IJ form, it's good for us to write that it is two I over the square root of 29 minus five J over 29. It's good when we write it this, this way. Put it back in the form that they give you. If they give you in IJ form, put it in IJ form. If they give you in vector form, put it in vector form. This is part I covered. Now part I, 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 they want us now to work out an angle. They want angle AOB. 
I like to like I like to sketch the graph to see what is A O B. So if I were to sketch the graph, then this is what I notice. If I were to sketch the graph, I would notice that I have A is three negative two. So this would be A three negative two. B would be the point five negative seven. 5, negative 7 is somewhere down here. Let's say somewhere down here. This would be the point B. So what would be A O B? So this is So this is A to O and then this is now O to B. All right, so what they want is angle AOB. Angle AOB is this angle that they want, this angle in here. So we can call that angle theta. Now to find that angle, we just need vector OA dot vector OB. All right, and that will give us angle AOB. All right, so what we do know is that angle, angle OAB, angle OAB is going to be equal to the cosine inverse of, angle OAB is equal to cosine inverse of the dot product between vector OA dot vector OB over the norm of vector OA, which means the magnitude of vector OA times the magnitude of vector OB. And that's how we will work this out. Nice and easy. So this works out to be cosine inverse OA dot OB is going to be the dot product between these two vectors. The dot product is going to be 3 minus 2 times the dot product of 5 negative 7 so that's OA dot OB all divided by the magnitude of vector OA and the magnitude of vector OA is 3 square plus 2 square square rooted times the magnitude of vector OB. Magnitude of vector OB is 5 square plus 7 square. So this is what we're working on. That's going to be cosine inverse of. Now it's going to be 3, 3 times 5 plus negative 2 times negative 7. That's 29. So this works out to be cosine inverse of 29 divided by. Then we have. 3 square plus 2 square, which is the square root of 13 times, so this is working out to be the square root of 13 times, now 5 square plus 7 square is 74 times 13. Three square plus two square multiplied by five square plus seven square I'm getting the square root of 962. So this is what we're finding. So this works out to be equal to 29 divided by the square root of 962. I will take cosine inverse of that and so. 
Given our answer, let's say we want to give it in, let's give our answer in degrees. Maybe you want to give your answer in degrees. They didn't specify whether to use degrees or radians. When they don't give you which one to use, you go ahead and you choose degrees. And so I'm getting that the angle is 20.8 degrees. When we take cosine inverse of that, we get 20.8 degrees. They said give the answer to one decimal place. So that's that. Soft. That takes care of question three. Question four. Question four, it starts with, this seems to be a trick question. It says, the following diagram shows a circle with radius four centimeter and center O, and it gives us the sector AOB. And it says, if the area of the triangle is a half R square, calculate the area shaded. I like to call area shaded AS. Area shaded AS is going to be equal to area of the triangle, area of the triangle minus area of the sector. My apologies, it's area of the sector minus area of the triangle. So area of the sector minus area of the triangle give you area shaded. I like to call sector sec. Area of the sector minus area of the triangle. Now, area of the sector is going to be equal to area of sector from CSEC mathematics is theta over 360 times pi r squared. Area of sector is theta. In this case, theta is pi by 6. So it's theta over 360. In this case, 360 is 2 pi times pi r squared times pi r squared, which is pi times r is four square. And that will give you area of the sector minus area of the triangle. It said area of the triangle is a half r square theta. So it's a half r, which is four square times the sine of theta which is a sine of pi by six. So this is all we have to work out. And so the area of the sector is actually equal to, we have pi by six divided by two pi. Now pi by six divided by two pi is really pi by six multiplied by one over pi 1 over 2 pi, the pi's cancel, and so we we'll get 1 over 12. This part works out to be 1 over 12 times 4 square is 16. This works out to be 16 pi, 16 over 12 pi minus, no, a half 4 square is 8 times the sine of 30. Pi by six is 30, so it's multiplied by the sine of 30, that's four. So this works out to be 16 over 12 pi minus four. And so this is now the area shaded. So you can just write units, oh, it's, it's centimeters. So this is the area shaded. So just tell them that this is centimeter square. 16 over 12 pi centimeters squared. And that takes care of part A. Next we need is part B. Part B. Part B now is going to be, it says solve this now. You have eight sine square theta equal to five minus 10 cos theta. So we have eight 
sine square theta eight sine square theta and that's equal to five minus ten cos theta Now, in order to do this question, first thing you know is that sine squared is one minus cos squared. So we can always rewrite this as eight times one minus cos squared theta. So eight times one minus cos squared theta is actually equal to five minus 10 cos theta. That's what we have. Nice and easy, soft. Now we can expand this now to get 8 minus 8 cos squared theta. 8 minus 8 cos squared theta. And that's equal to 5 minus 10 cos theta. So now we can bring over the minus 10 cos theta and bring over the, whatever you want to do, let's bring over the eight cos square over here. So we're gonna say zero is equal to, bring over the eight cos square theta to get eight cos square theta. Minus 10 cos theta. And then when you bring over this eight, it's gonna become, when you bring over eight, it, it becomes five minus eight, which is minus three. So we have eight cos square theta minus four cos theta minus three equals zero. Think of cos theta as y, all right? So let y equal cos theta. Because if we substitute y as cos theta, then you're gonna realize that really and truly what we're solving is 8y, what we're really solving is 8y squared, really and truly we're solving 8y squared minus 10 times y minus three equals zero. So now all of this reduced down to just be a quadratic equation. Solving the quadratic equation is easy. We can just factorize it now. It has to be three and one. This look like two y and four y. Like four y, two y. Signs are different, but the bigger number goes with the negative. So minus and plus, all right? And so what we're getting then is that from this, we're getting that y is equal to minus a quarter. And from this, we're getting that y is equal to three over two. From this, we're getting y is three over two. Now from this one, this one has no solution. So let's continue it over here. Let's make a line right here to continue part two. So for part two, the solutions that we're getting are, we're getting that cos theta, because cos theta is y. So we're getting that cos theta, which is y. We're getting actually getting cos theta is equal to negative a quarter, or we're getting cos theta is three over two. Now, if cos theta is three over two, this one is not possible. Cos theta equal three over two, not possible. Why is cos theta equal three over two not possible? Because cos theta has to be between one and negative one. So this has no solution. Remember that the cos of theta has to always be between one and negative one. So this has no solution. Now, since this has no solution, what we're focused on is cos theta equal minus a quarter. So we need to find theta. First, we're gonna to have to draw our circle. So draw our circle to look where cos is negative. So remember, all 
schools, all schools teach craft. All schools are teaching crap. And so cos is positive here and here. And so these are where we want the answers where cos is negative. So first we need to find the principal acute angle, which is cos inverse of a quarter. So find out what is cos inverse of a quarter. And you get 75 degrees, 75.5. So you get 75.5. Now, we want the answers in this quadrant. So the value for theta is going to be equal to 180 minus 75.5. So theta is 180 minus 75.5. Or theta is going to be 180 plus 75.5. Those are the two values for theta. Nice and easy, soft. So if you want now, you should, well, not if you want, you should. You should simplify it and write it as, that means the two possible values for theta are 104 minus 75.5 degrees, or theta is equal to 255.5 degrees. Put in a degree sign, those are the two answers for theta. Nice and easy, soft. Now let's go ahead now and look at part C. Part C says to prove the identity sine theta plus sine two theta over one plus cos theta plus cos two theta is equal to tan theta. So to do this proof, you always start with your left-hand side. Now your left-hand side is logically equivalent to, it says it is sine theta plus sine two theta over one sine theta plus sine two theta over one plus cos theta plus cos two theta. Now in order to do this proof, you're gonna need to know some trig identities. So the identity that you're really gonna need to know is you're just gonna need to remember that sine two theta is two sine theta cos theta. So we're gonna rewrite this as sine two theta as we know in the numerator. So this will become sine theta plus sine two theta, which is two sine theta cos theta. Two sine theta cos theta. That's what we have. Then we're dividing it by, no, one plus cos theta plus cos two theta. That's gonna be one plus cos theta plus, now, cos two theta, cos two theta is two cos squared theta minus one. That's cos two theta, two cos squared theta minus one. Nice and easy. Now, as we can see, the one and the minus one is gonna cancel each other. And this is gonna become equivalent to, now sine theta is in common here. So we can factor out sine theta. We're gonna factor out sine theta from the numerator. And so what we're left back with is one plus cos theta. Nice and easy. Now from the denominator, we're gonna factor out cos theta. We're gonna factor out cos theta and what we're gonna be left back with is factoring out cos theta. We're gonna notice that factoring out cos theta leaves us with one plus, now when you factor out cos theta from two cos square theta, oh, factor out sine, we're left back with one plus two cos theta, sorry. 
which is number two right here. And then we're gonna left back with two cos theta here as well. Now the one plus two cos theta cancels the one plus two cos theta. We're left with sine theta over cos theta, which is tan theta. And this is how we do the proof, tan theta. I want to get tan theta, that's equivalent to your right hand side. It's quite easily brushed aside. This is our right hand side. So we can write quite easily brushed aside. Nice and easy, soft. Quite easily brushed aside. On to question number five. 